on this channel we only give you updates that concerns Chelsea and Chelsea alone. Alright guys, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, depending on where you're watching me from. Over here it's evening and also happy Sunday to you. If you are new to this channel, do it to like, share, subscribe because on this channel we only deliberate on Chelsea matters. Yes, um, yeah to make one or two references concerning yesterday's game. And this time around, I'm going to be brutal in doing that. And also, I'm going to push down every emotional thought of mine to analyze this, analyze what I later observed from Enzo Maresca yesterday. Um, coming in this morning, I said, that, let me go through the highlights of that game. And I was like, okay, okay, this is what this man is trying to do. This is what you are getting. And this is where he's, he's trying to correct. And I believe that he's watching every moves and everybody try to make sure that he gets a perfect team out of these players. You understand? Now, we start coming from the formation, he played four midfielders, KDH, uh, Lavia, Casado, Enzo Fernandez. You understand? He played these four midfielders. I believe that why he played these four midfielders was he wanted to check something. He wanted to analyze these midfielders. He wanted to know their strengths and their weakness. And I believe that he got it yesterday. He got it yesterday. He saw it yesterday. He have seen that playing the four of them, he don't think he can get an actual flow of flexibility in midfield playing the four of them. Just like what we complained last season when Pochettino was playing the likes of Galaga, Casado, and Enzo. He was not getting it right. He was not getting what he, wa he wants. Like, even though the formation worked in some games, not all games, it really worked. Because the midfield was stiff and it was not flexible enough. I believe that is why Mareska tried playing the four of them. Because if you check very well, those are the four key midfielders right now for Chelsea. I'm not trying to be sarcastic here, but those are the four key midfielders. So I believe that you have seen their strengths and also seen their weakness. You have analyzed each uh, and every one of them that, okay, this one can navigate from like this, this one can play like this. But truth be told, truth be told, I out of the four of them, I'll give kudos to KDH and Lavier. Sorry, that, that's why I say that I, I, I have to come down, watch the highlights this morning and also come back and do this analysis for you guys without being emotional, you understand? I, be, I believe that KDH, KDH, something good will come out from that guy. And you see Romeo Lavia, don't worry. Lavia is the man. Take it or leave it, Lavia is the man. Lavia is the man. But playing the four of them, or even three of them, I don't, after watching them two yesterday, I don't think playing even Moses Casado, Lavia and Enzo, which all of us we are seeing as we are seeing as to be Chelsea dream midfield. I don't think that we work too. I don't know for you guys, you can drop your opinion and thoughts, but I don't think that we work. So when I checked, I, I say, okay, I say, okay, this is a good one, it's a fair one. Then coming to the defense, which I believe that he's still trying to find a perfect solution to that three-man defense, which is playing. But on my own side, after going through the match yesterday all over again, I noticed something. When the opponent gets the ball, the defense are not fast in tracking back. With that kind of defense, and our defenders are not fast in tracking back, who we'll easily concede goals via counter attack. I'm not, I'm not trying to be emotional right now in this analysis. I'm just trying to be straight. It's very difficult for the defenders to track back, to make move, to mark ball. So for me, I don't know, just like I said, I am not the coach. I still believe that he is still, he's still trying to battle in getting the defense right. So maybe when the Premier League starts, our first game against Man City, we will see a different game altogether. Maybe by then, Palma must be back. Gala, um, I mean, Cucurella must be back by then. So he needs a fast pace wing and, and defenders. Just like I said yesterday, I was not really um, impressed with Tosin because whenever Tosin loses the ball, it's very difficult for him to track back. The only person that was even trying to track and also follow up the situation was even Lewicowi. Lewicowi. 
and also the inverting of um, uh, gusto, I'm not against it. I'm not against it, but it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. You understand? It's not going to be easy. But anyhow, in that defense line, they should Mareska should find a solution to that problem. Else, if you concede a lot of goals, definitely it's also going to affect your ranking in the EPL table. Just imagine that Chelsea is around third, uh, within third and fourth, or fourth and fifth, and we're having the same points with a particular uh, club, and the only thing differentiating us is goal difference. Because of we consider a lot of goals that has minus the goals that we have already scored, it's going to be something else. Then, also, I believe him starting uh, Sanchez throughout the Man City game, he was also observing his errors, his strengths and his weakness. Yes, because we, it was too obvious. It was too obvious. Truth be told, Sanchez passes. They say he's very good at his feet. I'm sorry to say this, but the few, the few minutes that was given to Philip Jorgensen in the Club America, I feel his passes was more clinical and more accurate than Sanchez's own. But let me don't conclude yet because of he played a weaker team being Club America. Maybe if Mareska should try Jorgensen against Real Madrid being our next game, maybe we'll try to know more and see the kind of goalkeeper Jorgensen is to um, uh, this guy, Robert Sanchez. But truth be told, majority of us, of Chelsea fans, does not really fancy or think he should be Mariska number one. But well, the number one position is still open. I will not tell you that Sanchez is the number one or Philip Jorgensen is the number one. It's still open. It's just a matter of who is doing well that will be given that spot as the number one. You understand? But for Mariska, he feels Sanchez remains his number one while Jorgensen comes in as a number two. But the goalkeeper is saying, I came to compete with Sanchez. So, you see, I've talked about the midfield and I've also talked about the defense that in the defense line, they need to be fast in tracking back. The, the goalkeeper should also understand the fact that he's a goalkeeper, irrespective of the fact that he's trying to use his feet to navigate passes and trying to create ways for the defenders to pass with the, mid, with the midfield. Then coming to the attack, coming to the attack. Omar, <sighs> we need good wingers. Even before, even when, when we heard that Mareska is coming, and we heard that Mareska have signed the deal to join Chelsea, I said, I, I said something earlier that one thing I've seen in Mareska during his time in the Sester City is that he makes good use of his wingers. His wingers are always effective. They can navigate, they can drive, they can penetrate through tight spaces, they can give clinical passes. Not the midfielder, not the wingers of Sterling, Madrike, and Mudrik that you hold on to ball, you get confused, you don't know when to give the passes. As for Madweke, let me don't be too harsh on him. I know for some days now I've been too harsh, even though he's giving us some glimpse or good, good vibes. He scored a goal yesterday, no doubt, but he needs to calm, he, he needs to calm down. He needs to calm down. He, he needs to remove pride. He needs to remove pride and calm down and play his football. Else, that guy has a lot of potentials, which, out of his attitude, is not ready to unleash some of them. If he keeps behaving like this, he cannot unleash anyone. He needs to drop his pride and play for Chelsea. He should not feel as if, because you are, you are playing for Chelsea, you have arrived. You have not arrived. You have not arrived, because you have not gotten anything. Have you won any trophy? No. He needs to calm down. That is why during the training session, I said something one, one of these days during Enzo Mariska training session. He said that uh, when Mariska said that, hey, Noni, one, two, one, two, don't hold on too much. Don't hold on too much. You give me, I give you. And it's true. You want to hold on to play too on countless time. You want to be holding the ball too much. You hold on to onto the ball before you know your opponents have meet up. The same thing applicable to Raheem Sterling. No doubt, Sterling is, a, is an experienced player. Is somebody that can turn up when you don't expect him. But, Baba, come on. Next season, we won't be taking some of these things as an excuse from these players. They are paying them for crying out loud. If I'm not mistaken, Sterling is the highest paid player in Chelsea. So he needs to do his best. 
Initially, we were even bank or we were even raising an alarm to see if Chelsea can sell him out from the club this summer. But the guy is insisting that he still he still wants to be part of this project. He still wants to fight his way in the Chelsea team. He still wants for, to, to fight for the club. But if you are fighting for a club, you need to do it well. You need to do it right. You need to do it in the way that people will say that, okay, yes, this one, be like, you don't adjust. Then coming to Mudrik, I'm not, I'm not, I know that we have downplayed Mudrik for some time now, saying that he's not really good. He's not the kind of player that is worth playing for Chelsea. Fine. In short, majority of them, vast of these players are not players that are, are ready to, are, they are not fit to play for Chelsea. They are average players, if I'm to go use that word. Most of the players signed to Chelsea are average players, but what can we do? We are in a new era, so we need to learn how to adapt to the new uh, 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 system that they give to us, the fans. You understand? So as for Mudrik, I, I think what Mudrik would need right now, this is my advice to him, I think what he needs right now, apart from the fact that he list, he's listening to the one that Mikel gave to him, that he needs to cut his head, which he has gone to cut his head. This is my own to him. He needs a personal... A, 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 a personal coach, just like what Kasai do did. He got a personal coach that talked with him and also helped him in getting good game. So I believe Mudrik needs that right now. Because what I saw yesterday, his moves we are something else. Mudrik cannot even take on players. At every given touch, the ball is always fast tracking. Before you know, he loses the ball. Then, as for Kunku, I believe he, Mareska tried to play Nkunku as a nine to see if truly, truly things, things can happen for Nkunku to play in that same position as a number nine, as in playing as a number nine, whether something positive more than what you have seen him play previously can happen if he plays as a number nine. But truth be told, I think, <laughs> I think he might be, he, he's disappointed in that area. Because Nkunku is somebody that likes to track back. He needs to work with, the, he, he, he likes to come back to get the ball. And the moment Maguire was brought in, we saw it immediately. We saw Nkunku. We saw the wide range of Nkunku coming out. We saw the beast in him coming out. We saw the moves. Ah, that is why I'm saying that. I just pray that this guy should be fit for me next, next season. Then, I guess that is all. That is all. Then when the rest of Fofana, uh, Viega, all the rest, the second set that came in, we saw what happened. Still the same defensive error. So I believe that um, what Mareska should really work on or ponder on right now, if really this style of football he's bringing, I'm not downplaying his pattern or the style he wants to introduce to the team and what the owners have seen that this is what they want the team to play in the next two or ten years coming, eh? in terms of getting possession football. But like I said, possession football without results is rubbish. So I would say that Mareska should really work on that defense area. I know it's not going to be a smooth ride for him, but whatever he's doing, he should try and hasten up. We are going to be patient, but we have limitation in our being patient as a Chelsea fans. I'm just being honest here. But truth be told, we played a very good game yesterday. <laughs> we played a good game. Like I said earlier, I said that I have to go back and watch that game again. We played a very good game yesterday. Just that the midfield was overchoked. There was no flexibility inside the midfield. And it looked as if the players, they have not really understand the kind of football which they have been given or the assignment they have been given to take or to do. I just believe they have not really understand it. But please, they should understand before the Man City game. They should try and understand. And also, um, Mareska, well, well, I guess that would be all for now. That would be all in that side of not being emotional in analyzing this game. You understand? Because yesterday, I just have to use the feeling, the emotion to talk on so many things that was really, I was just pissed off with everything that was going around the club. But for now, I've sat down and I've checked everything and I see where we are going to. to. It's just left for these guys to just work with this man. And definitely, according to the, uh, KDH, he said that when the time comes, we'll see the best of what Mareska wants to do. 
You understand? Then going forward, as for Konogalaga deal, we are still watching, we are still looking from afar to see if the player will give his final thought on it. It's left for him to decide, just like I told you guys. So Galaga, for me, I will, I will tell you, say, make you just talk, yes. Go Atletico Madrid. Go Atletico Madrid. And again, for Galaga deal, some of us Chelsea fans, we could try to out our mind from him. Because club don't already decide say they want to sell him. And they go sell him. They want to make money with the deal. They go make him. You understand? We'll come out our minds. Yeah, Galaga helped the team. We know Galaga helped the team. But the truth is that Soja go, Soja come back. Remain. Joan Mata helped Chelsea during the when Chelsea won the Champions League 2012. If if I'm not mistaken, Joan Mata was a major contributor in during during that particular season. But what happened? Chelsea see sold him out. Messi Mons that played heaven and eight in the Champions League for Chelsea. Made us won the Champions League. What's happened when Chelsea is not finding a new contract? They sold him out to Manchester United. Our star boy. They sold him out to Manchester United. What happened to this other guy, Eden Hazard? After much, after much shouting, doings, and everything, what happened next? They sold him off to Real Madrid and Chelsea still remain Chelsea. The truth remains is that no player is bigger than a club. I know that um, if I'm to throw it, Emotionally, it's it's hot the way they're handling the case. But bro, this is business. This is business. Let's just allow it to happen this way. If they feel that Galaga won't fit into the system, we should just take it like that. We are not there. They are the ones seeing everything. Definitely, before they they will take this decision, I believe the coach has also had one or two conversations with both the 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 player and also with the with the with the team with the uh, this thing board. So what am I saying? So let them just do the business. Galaga, accept that Atletico Madrid. You know, think and twice. You understand? If you don't want to accept, then accept the three years contract that Chelsea is offering you. Because I see that three years contract as a 50-50 team. The other 50 is looking as if Chelsea wants to watch how he's going to fit into the system. If truly he's going to fit into the system, Chelsea is going to watch him from afar. And also the other 50, Chelsea is trying to make sure that he doesn't leave free of charge. Maybe coming next season, they can still put him up in the transfer window. And if a good club bring a good bid for what they want, they will still sell him off just in case Galaga does not get the kind of game time he wants in Chelsea. So everything is just complicated. If Galaga should accept seven years contract, take it or leave it, it's going to end up as my lancer. And that is what I don't want for any Chelsea player. I don't want it for any Chelsea player. Guy, you are too young for that. So, guys, I believe that will be all for now. Do it to like, share, subscribe, follow this page because on this channel, I will give you updates that concerns Chelsea and Chelsea alone. My name is Peters.